Dear YouTube and viewers, it has always been the goal of Talflator Mouse to produce content that is not only family friendly, but also advertiser friendly. We have always abided by your printed rules to ensure that our videos can remain monetized. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Flater Mouse, and yes, I hate groveling like that. <laughs> Today we have a much requested video involving magnets and very high velocities. These were sent to us by Evan Perry. It's a stack of ceramic magnets, and we want to see what effect these will have when we propel them to around a thousand miles an hour and the effects they will have on stationary objects. I hope you'll enjoy this. We try to include as many ideas as you guys suggested to us. Hello, welcome back. Jeff and Chad here. I mean, <laughs> Danny. <laughs> uh, today we're gonna be accelerating uh, magnets to around a thousand miles per hour. We're not gonna show you how we're doing this because of YouTube's craziness but I'm sure you know how. But it's just one more excuse why YouTube demonetizes our video. It's getting very frustrating. So this is not only an experiment in how magnets behave at 1,000 miles per hour, but also uh, an experiment to see if this video will get demonetized. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, the idea, you know, a lot of viewers wanted us to pass magnets at high velocities over steel plates through uh, non-ferrous tubes, uh, past other magnets, past other magnets, compasses, and, and just see if it has any effect. Um, you know, as it passes by, whether it'll it'll cause you know if we could see anything happening. Very high velocity projectiles um, and their effects on stationary objects, basically. Hope you'll enjoy it. I hope you understand it. We can't show you how we're doing this, even though you know how, but uh, hope you'll enjoy the video. Okay, for this first test, we're gonna pass the projectile over the top of these magnets. It's on a slight slope and see if the magnet will attract the neodymium. Neodymium? Yeah. Hard drive magnets. Hard drive magnets, yeah. It certainly looked like the magnet projectile had an effect on the stationary magnets. Let's see what happened. Even though the projectile travels very close to the other magnets, it was really just the shock wave that caused the entire cardboard to kind of shake a little bit and cause the disruption. Even though these magnets have a lot of attractive force, we didn't see the magnets getting snatched up by the thousand mile an hour magnetic projectile. Let's try to get the magnet a little closer. We'll adjust the uh, rail gun, the electromagnetic rail gun a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to skim it right over the top and see if we have that same effect. Okay, I'm ready. In this shot, Danny was aiming at the back edge of the cardboard, trying to hit it, but also getting it as low as possible. And again, there is no attraction between the 1,000 mile an hour projectile and the stationary magnets. Now another thing we're trying as an experiment to keep this video monetized is to dub in kind of fake sounds. Uh, we're gonna see if that works and hopefully keep this video monetized. Another suggestion viewers have made is to pass the magnetic projectile over a steel plate, see if it will become attracted to it or the particles stick to it or, or something. <laughs> Let's see what that does. No pieces? No pieces. Mises. That's ceramic. Good. That was good uh, railgun shooting there. That's ceramic. Uh, definitely scarred that AR-500 plate. Really? 
Yeah, there's some definite scarring in it. Wow. Well, we don't see the 1,000 mile an hour magnet suddenly getting drawn towards the plate or anything. And the fragments coming off, we don't see those attracting and sticking back together or anything. It's just going way too fast. I think the amazing part here is those two flies were not hit with all that shrapnel. <laughs> the dangling magnet experiment. Will the projectile affect the magnets? Very strong neodymium magnets. Charge the flush flux capacitor. Okay, I'm ready. Now this shot, we just had a funky angle and we get, got a lot of heat distortion, but there goes the magnetic projectile passing just inches between those two dangling neodymium magnets. And really it was going so fast that it really didn't have much of an effect on the magnets. It didn't, you know, cause them to flicker around or anything like that. I think again, just the shock wave disturbed the, the one on the left. This next experiment is for the people who want us to pass a magnet through a copper tube. Uh, aluminum tube also has that same effect. You can look it up on YouTube. Let's see what happens. Clean the dust out of the pipe. Now the placement of the 1,000 mile an hour magnet couldn't have been more perfect. Absolutely beautiful placement there. We didn't see anything happen other than a puff of dust coming out the back. Now if anything I expected the aluminum tube to kind of jerk a little bit, but it didn't happen. Okay, you've seen the experiment well where people drop ma uh, magnets through a, a copper tube or even an aluminum tube. It doesn't have to be copper, it can be aluminum or any non-ferrous metal. It just has to be electrically conductive by what I understand. We're going to pass the, the magnet at a thousand miles an hour through this uh, aluminum foil tube, very fragile, and see if it'll, what effect it has on it, if it'll collapse it or, or not do anything. All right, here we go. Hey, it distorted it. That was kind of what I thought it would do, kind of because it's so fragile, it would cause it to collapse a little bit. Finally, we see some results, but is it the magnetic flux causing this or the shock wave? Now to be objective here, since we didn't really see any results in the previous test of the high speed magnet passing over the other stationary objects, if it was probably the shock wave that caused this effect. I really think this would be an interesting experiment to expand on in the future though. This last experiment uses two compasses which should rule out any effect of the shock wave. Only the magnetic field from the projectile will cause deviation in our compasses. The placement of the projectile was about as perfect as you could possibly get it, passing right between the two compasses. But we saw absolutely no deviation in the compasses at all. No movement, no effect. The projectile was just traveling too fast. Now the string on the right was probably cut by a fragment of the magnetic projectile. Uh, you probably noticed in a lot of shots there was little stray pieces. The, you know, it is a pretty fragile object and we did get some breakage anyway i hope we covered your idea we tried to use all your ideas the only one i couldn't do was to pass it over some kind of coil to see if we could generate electricity uh i don't know if that would have worked or not but we tried to get all your other uh suggestions in there but we want to thank our generous patreon supporters uh we could always use more help but we're very thankful for the ones we've got Without you guys, we would have had to quit a long time ago. More and more videos are getting demonetized every day. 
and uh, without you guys we couldn't do these unusual tests for you. Thanks for watching.